Today we're looking at one of the most misunderstood tools in our industry, Ohm's Law. Now Ohm's Law states that in a circuit, electrical current is proportional to voltage and inversely proportional to resistance. Well, you might think that this concept is for electrical engineers only, but in fact, Ohm's Law is a very useful tool to AV professionals, as we're about to see. This is the typical chart that we use to help us remember how to use Ohm's Law. Here you can see how current is proportional to voltage, and likewise resistance is proportional to voltage. But here we can see that the current is inversely proportional to resistance. This little chart is handy and it can be found just about everywhere online. Now here's a much easier way to look at this concept. In the triangle, consider the horizontal line just like the divisor in a fraction. The number above the line is divided by the number below the line, or the number to the left is multiplied by the number on the right to get the unknown value. Now let's say we're putting together a 70 volt distributed sound system with 7 speakers that are each tapped at 15 watts, and it has a 120 watt amplifier. Now we need to know what cable to use, so using our handy dandy chart here, we have a voltage of 70.7 .7 volts and know that the total power of all 7 speakers is 15 watts times 7, or about 105 watts. Now we take the total power of 105 watts and divide it by the 70.7 .7 volts and come up with the amount of current traveling along the cable, and that'll be about 1.49 or 1 1.5 amps. Now you know that you need to use the cable that exceeds this capability, which in this case can be a thinner gauge and a low cost speaker cable as an example. And finally let's look at a project where we've got to mount a PTZ camera right on the wall, but there's no power outlet anywhere near that location, you've probably been there done that. Of course we could pay the electrical contractor to install one there for several hundred dollars, but we can use Ohm's law to extend the camera's power supply however far we need it. Now I know the camera manufacturer says you can't do that, but you know you can, and Ohm's Law will show you how. Now first we got to understand that the camera needs a certain voltage to operate properly. Now we might find that information in the specs, but probably not. We can bench test by dropping the voltage until the camera stops performing consistently. But the easier way is to look at the power supply's output voltage and current. In this case we'll say our supply says 12 volts DC and 500 milliamps current. Next we'll look for a cable to extend the power leads. Here's a typical cable chart. In order to find the voltage drop across a 50 foot length of this cable, we'll use this little triangle tool, E equals IR, where we know the current of the power supply is 500 milliamps or half an amp. We'll see that for a 16 gauge speaker wire here the resistance is 4.016 ohms per thousand feet. Well if we multiply 0.5 amps by 4.016 ohms we get 2.08 volts dropped. Now it'll get a little bit more complicated than that if we get too far into the weeds, so let's just suffice to say that the voltage drop will be way less than 1 volt. Now we can substitute a 13.8 volt DC 1 amp power supply and extend the cable 50 or 100 feet and get the same output at the camera that we would have had with the factory supplied 12 volt wall ward power supply. So now you know how Ohm's Law and this handy wheel chart can help you in dozens of cases in the course of your job.